good morning students today we are going to take up a new topic and that is soil resources and we will be studying in detail about the soils of india in the next few weeks to come so let us first understand what is soil now soil is the thin upper surface layer of the mantle rock on earth comprising of mineral particles decaying organic matter living organisms water and air now basically soil is very important for us soil is a medium for plants to grow because plants provide food for all land creatures thus all living beings are directly or indirectly related to soil through the food which we get soil is a very important natural resource of india because all agricultural production is generally dependent on the fertility of the soil food products like cereals pulses fruits vegetables are all obtained indirectly from the soil successful farming depends largely on the soil the rich deep soil of the ganga plain especially the deltas and the coastal plains of kerala support a very high density of population through agricultural prosperity now there are number of factors which contribute to the formation of soil and its fertility the most important being the parent material relief climate and natural vegetation let us learn how parent material help in soil formation now the source of the rock fragments that make up soil is parent material which may either be the bedrock or the loose sediments transported elsewhere by water wind or ice the surface rocks are exposed to the process of weathering and suffer decay and decomposition in this process the rocks are converted into fine grains and provide a base for soil formation so here we can see that the parent material with time will ultimately turn into soil the soils from northern plains of india have been largely derived from the depositional work of the himalayan rivers the rivers deposit very fine alluvium during the course of their journey spread over hundreds of kilometers and since thousands of years in this picture which is being displayed you can see how the rivers are carrying large amount of silt along with them 
as they move from the higher Himalayas towards the plates and as they flow in the plains, they keep depositing this rich alluvium on the land. Now this has been done since thousands of years and that has led to the layers of alluvium to be laid down layer after layer making the Gangetic Plain a very rich and fertile land. These soils which are brought by the rivers have very little relation with the original rocks because all these soil which has been brought down by the northern rivers are known as XC2 that is the soil has been brought from elsewhere and deposited on the Gangetic Plain. On the other hand, the soils of the peninsular plateau is generally coarse grade and are associated closely to the parent rock because all this soil has been formed over here itself that is on the Deccan plateau. Millions of years ago, the lava ejected out very very stealthily and spread over this large Deccan plateau region in the form of black soil. So this kind of soil is known as in situ soil. That means the soil has originated in the land itself and it has not been brought from elsewhere. Relief also plays a very important role in determining the soil formation. It influences the process of soil formation and the most important being the slope of the land. Steep slope encourages swift flow of the water so the soil is very thin. Here, for example, here you can see the slope of the land is pretty steep. So here the soil will not be able to stay for a very long time. As a result, the soil is of very thin. It's very thin in the sense that the layers which are laid down is very thin. The areas of low relief or gentle slope generally experience deposition and have deep layers of soil. Now, as the slope becomes gentle, here the filtration will be higher and there will be less erosion. And so the soil will be somewhat thicker than in the upper layers while the best quality of soil will be found at the lowland or the foothills of the mountains because here the land will be flat the filtration will also be less and soils of the uphill will get deposited layer by layer and will remain here without being disturbed. Here there is little filtration but here the filtration is very high. Water will get filtered and will remain but here that is in the higher slopes this is not so. As a result the layer 
in this steep slope is very thin while the lower layers over here is very thick. Now soil develops through a complex interaction of physical, chemical and biological processes. And this soil formation process is known as pedogenesis. There may be soil erosion in areas of steep slope. Chemical ravens offer an important example of soil erosion. Soil erosion makes land unsuitable for cultivation and the land so developed is called a bad land. In this picture you can see the Chambal Basin. River Chambal is flowing and these lands are known as the ravens. Here once upon a time due to lack of vegetation rainfall being heavy led to gully erosion that is grooves were made due to the falling of the rain and these grooves began to move backwards making this entire area a bad land a land which became useless however today this is not the case this entire area of the chambal valley which once upon a time was a bad land due to gully erosion have been transformed into a green cover due to the continuous afforestation and reforestation which went on by the people over there and several NGOs who had taken up this matter. So today these bad lands have now changed into very beautiful green cover. Climate also influences soil formation and primarily through effects of water and solar energy. Water is solvent in which chemical reactions take place in the soil and it is essential to the life cycles of soil organisms. Water is also the principal medium for the erosive or percolative transport of solid particles. So by this we mean that the temperature and moisture that is rainfall also play a very significant role in the formation of soil. Both chemical and biological processes are accelerated or increased due to high temperature and very high moisture. However, the same processes are slowed down during times of low temperature and lack of moisture or lack of rainfall. Natural vegetation is also a very significant factor in determining the soil formation. The decayed leaf material adds the much needed humus to soil thereby increasing its fertility. Roots hold the soil and so they prevent erosion. So wherever we find there is vegetative cover, there will be more of moisture in the land and more of nutrients. Areas which do not have vegetative cover will not lead to the absorption of moisture and so the soil nutrients will also be very less. So all these factors 
play a very important role in determining the soil formation. So students, today we learnt about the importance of soil and soil formation and it was a topic in which I introduced you to the lesson of soil resources. In the next few weeks, we will learn in detail about the types of soil in India, how soil erosion occurs, the causes, prevention and conservation along with several other aspects. So that is what we have enough time for today. Thank you.